Hello, how y'all doing? I'm going to talk today about Creflo Dollar. Now, I've only listened to him a few times in my life. I have one book by him. Uh, I didn't think it was very interesting when I bought it. I read it years ago, but I don't listen to him that often, but I do know about him. Um, uh, when he talked about repentance, I thought he was going to talk about some type of moral failure. I didn't know he was going to talk about uh, tithes and offerings. He's talking about he's changed his stance on tithes and offerings. Now, the problem I have with this is that he should have corrected himself 25, 30 years ago. I mean, we always have to correct ourselves, but he should have done that 25, 30 years ago. Um, because he knows, and he, st he knows the game. Market the gospel to the masses of poor people, particularly poor blacks. You get, and you're going to get millions of dollars every month. You know, market the gospel to the poor whites. You're going to get millions of dollars every month because rich people do not give to ministries. It comes from poor people donating $20, $30. So, so he knows the game and he's still a game. If you want to get that million dollars, at least a month of tithes and offering, then you're going to have to market the, market the gospel to poor people. But see, he already has his money, probably $10 million in the bank in his pocket. Um, there's no talk of sin. There's no talk of fasting. Um, I've never heard anybody say, now if they said, uh, there's no talk of doing anything for the poor. If they said, we're going to build 15 houses on the Indian reservation, they wouldn't have any tithes and offering because you, do you really think those white folks are going to tolerate a ministry building a house for an Indian on the Indian reservation? No. Okay. They're not going to do it for the blacks in Mississippi somewhere because do you think those white folks or black folks are going to tolerate a ministry building a brand new house for some black folks in Mississippi? No. I mean, that money be cut out. They probably go broke overnight. So they're not going to talk about helping the poor. They're not going to do anything for the poor. What sells is a selfish gospel, sugar-coated, selfish, all about me gospel, selfish. We're not going to do anything for anybody else. Just give me the money for a jet. Give me the money for a McMansion. Give me the money for a car. Mercedes seems to be the uh, optimum car. Uh, and we all live happy ever after. Now, personally, I don't have a problem with tithes and offerings. I remember there were two occasions where I did not pay tithes and offerings, and that curse came. It's something, it's something uh, happened in the spiritual world. I sensed it in the spiritual world. There truly is a curse. If you don't pay tithes and you know give offerings, uh, there is a curse. You're under a curse, okay? Because I have sensed it in the spirit, spirit world. Tithes and offering is a form of worship. You see a lot of people screaming, hollering, and blowing snot, you know, when, when it's offering time. You don't need to do that. It's a form of worship to say, Lord, I appreciate everything you've done. And so I'm just giving you my tithes and offerings. Um, and the problem is a lot of these preachers, uh, advantage, they're just stupid about money. See, the, the one of the keys to success that wisdom is the key to success. I mean, that's in, I think, uh, Ecclesiastes or the Song of Solomon. Wisdom brings success. See, if you want money, you got to study money. They don't preach about that. They want to just sit, have Christians lazy, just sit back and do nothing, and money's going to come. It doesn't work like that. The Bible says wisdom brings success. If you want, if you want money, you gotta study money. If you want to be a cook, good cook, you gotta study food. Okay. Uh, the Bible says to count the costs. You gotta, you gotta count your costs, count your budget. Uh, be excellent. The Bible says the hand of the diligent maketh rich. Okay, you gotta be diligent, hardworking, and you gotta be excellent in everything you do. Okay, you just do. Um, so I think the problem is a lot of these preachers. Uh, they don't understand why God does not give them $100 million. When the truth is they cannot handle $100 million. They don't understand why God won't give them $100 million. So then they go to the devil, get, get the money from the devil, okay? Get $20 million from the devil. So now they're in the $20 million club, okay? But see, they don't know anything about money. That's why they go broke. I can't even count how many ministries are broke. Can't even pay the water bill. I mean, it's just too many to count. Why? Because they don't understand money. They don't know what a quarter is. They don't know the two dimes and nickels equal to a quarter. They don't know what a dollar is. They just don't understand money. Okay? So that's why they don't understand all this money that's coming in. So they just say, okay, well, I'm going to buy all these things. I'm going to buy all these material things. I'm going to buy a bigger, better house. I'm going to buy a bigger, better car. Okay? Buy that for my wife and my, my lazy children, too. Buy my lazy children a bigger, better car. Okay? And the problem... It is is that see a lot of these preachers just don't understand money, okay? But see this whole thing that ties is done away with, 
uh, that's a doctrine of devil. The tithes is done. It is not for this dispensation. It is for this dispensation. And it's for our benefit so we can prosper. But see, the problem with these ministries is, they, is that they just preach a sugar-coated gospel. You take like, uh, uh, there are some ministries that have the money. They can, they can eliminate the whole homeless problem in their city, but they won't do it. They can eliminate, single-handedly eliminate the whole. See, it's really up to the church to do that. The church is the one supposed to be buying the hotels to house people. We're supposed to be buying the houses to house people. Okay, but what that's not what sells, helping people. Helping the poor is not what sells. What help what sells is a sugar coated, selfish, self serving gospel. But like I said, I think Kreffler should have uh, corrected himself years ago. Why did he wait to old age to correct himself? But look, for him to say that ties is done away, that's a doctrine is done away with that's a doctrine of devils. Have a nice day.